the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you and good afternoon. You can speak, it's okay. Good afternoon. Much better. My friends, as we celebrate this special confirmation liturgy together, we place ourselves before our God, and in a moment of quiet, let us be at peace with him. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit, coming near and dwelling graciously within us, may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. 
One is the statement of the spirit, the expression of wisdom, to another, the expression of knowledge according to the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit, to another, gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another, mighty deeds, to another, prophecy, to another, discernment of spirits, to another, varieties of tongues, to another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit produces all of these, distributing them even individually to each person as he wishes. And the body is one and so as many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. Liturgy Mass. At this point, the pastor. 
capture myself and go to the microphone and present the confirmation class to the bishop. So the bishop would make some acceptance comment and then ask you to sit down and then he would give about a 25 minute homily. Well, I am not a bishop, thank God, and I'm not going to give a 25 minute homily either. Thank God as well. <laughs> But at this point, the bishop may address the confirmation students by asking you some questions. For a long time, Deacon Bob was the secretary to a bishop who did a lot of confirmations, and Bishop Alloway was great at asking questions for those to be confirmed. Well, I'm not going to do that, but I do want to ask you one question. You don't need to raise your hand or to give an answer, but I do want you to formulate in your own head an answer to this question, the one question I would ask this afternoon. What does the word confirm mean for you? What does the word confirm mean? We celebrate the sacrament of confirmation here this afternoon. And obviously that word has its root or its meaning in the word confirm. So it would be important for you to understand what it means to confirm something. Something happened in the past that is about to be confirmed. In a few minutes, you will stand and speak for yourselves for the first time in your faith journey and say yes or I do to your faith. Most of you were baptized when you were babies and your parents made the decision that you as their son or daughter was to be a Catholic and baptized in our faith. Well, this afternoon, you get to stand on your own two feet, and I will ask you some questions, and you will respond, hopefully, with yes, or I do, with some confirming faith. I purposely chose this gospel for us this afternoon. It just happens to be the gospel for this weekend's liturgies. And it occurs one week after Easter. And the disciples, the early church, were gathered together in a locked room out of fear, out of doubt, out of isolation. And Jesus comes and stands in their midst and offers them peace. Peace be with you. Thomas was not there when Jesus came the first time. And most of us have a little bit of Thomas in us. I'm sure at some point in your life, you've heard the word doubting Thomas. Maybe you've been accused of that, of being him. You want proof. Tell me why it's important for me to do this. Otherwise, I'm not. The second time Jesus appears, Thomas is with them this time and offers the proof that Thomas is looking for. And then Jesus says this, I send you out, go out into the world and preach the gospel by what you say and by what you do. And remember they were locked in a room out of fear. So what gave them the courage to do what Jesus asked? The Holy Spirit came to them. The same Holy Spirit that we pray you will receive here this afternoon. You will stand and say for yourselves, yes, I believe. And yes, I am willing to go out into the world from this day forward 
confirmed in my faith to preach the gospel by what I say and by what I do. There is no reason to fear. There is no reason to have doubt. Not long after she died, Mother Teresa, now St. Teresa of Calcutta, her last book was published after her death. And in that, in that book, one of the chapters of that book, she talks at great length about her doubt, the moments in her life when she feared that God wasn't with her. And it was the indwelling of the Spirit that came to her, that gave her the courage to continue her ministry, both as a nun and to the poor of Calcutta and beyond. My friends, as you receive that same spirit this afternoon, we hope and pray that that spirit will give you the courage to go, bring the gospel message, a message of compassion and kindness to all you will meet. You go out into a world that sorely needs to see what you can bring. God bless you all. I'd like to invite those that are about to be confirmed to please stand if you would. And this is where you stand on your own two feet and speak for yourselves. So I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and his empty promises? Do you believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. My friends, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts, and through this anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Francis, we seal the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. John, we seal the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Peter, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Alina, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Maria, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Mary, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Catherine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Rosanne, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Paulo, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Spirit, peace be with you. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Joseph, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Veronica, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Please be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Please stand if you would. My friends, let us humbly ask and pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity, which proceed from His Holy Spirit, are one. To these His servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, have planted in faith and grounded in love. They may bear witness to Christ the Lord by their way of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of, footsteps of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To the Holy Church of God, together with Francis Apple, John Patrick Archbishop, and all the bishops, that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. To the whole world, that all people who have one maker and follower may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters, without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which, is at, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, gathering all of our petitions into one, we pray with one voice in the words that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. May God, the Father Almighty, bless you, whom he has made, who he has made, his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his love. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of Truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power, in the confession of true faith, Amen. may the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer here this afternoon is ended, but we go forward as people of peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. I can just say one word of thanks, um, first to Ann Leia, our coordinator for putting this together this afternoon. <laughs> Needless to say, as Ann said,
at the beginning of our celebration this afternoon, it's been a challenging year trying to schedule classes and make them up and all that, but you know all that because you have to deal with that yourselves in school. I want to say a word of thanks to the parents. Any chance I get, I always say this, when your son or daughter was baptized, the priest or deacon who baptized them said this to you, you will be the first and best teacher your son or daughter will ever have in their faith. Not just a teacher, but the best teacher they will ever have. Your presence here this afternoon and getting them this, at this point in their adult life to be confirmed in their faith says to me that you took that promise that you made faithfully so many years ago and continuing that journey here this afternoon. And I'd be remiss if where all faith lies, and that is in grandparents, those that are here and those that are watching on TV and live streaming it um, on YouTube station, that's really in most of our families where our faith has its stronghold. So to them as well, I want to say a word of thanks for modeling your faith and passing it on to your family and to your grandchildren who are back to Lord confirm here this afternoon. Again, thank you all for being here this afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your day.